Yeah, so we're going to talk about giving a presentation at RIT SEC. Um, I've given a few over the years, um, and I thought I would give my secrets, um, mostly about how I pick a topic, um, how I research them, how I make my slides, and just some general presenting tips that I've found useful um, as I've progressed over the years. Um, I also took zero public speaking classes, which may or may not be a good thing. Uh, I think uh, I do pretty well on my own. I'll let you be the judge of that. But I guess we should first get rid of this white background, get a little dark theme going, as is the case for all RIT SEC presentations. Rule number one, dark theme always. But I guess we'll just hop into why should I present? Um, I don't think there's anything I'll really say to convince you to present. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about why I did and what it's done for me. So I first presented as like the spring semester of my first year. I had built a project basically just to map out who was SSHing into my server or trying to um, since RIT has public internet. And I mapped it out on a little map that refreshed every hour. It was pretty cool. And so I wanted to share it. And that was so frightening. Uh, I think I was shaking the whole day leading up to my presentation, um, really regretting signing up. And then um, all, of course, shaking afterwards too, but also feeling pretty proud that I had presented, even though it was the most, wasn't the most groundbreaking thing. Um, I'd still have shared something, got my lanyard, that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I really felt proud of presenting and it was addicting. Um, I presented a lot, uh, put a lot of work into presentations. They do take some work. Uh, you could do them uh, last minute, but I like to put some uh, thought and care into them and really research some things. And you'll probably be thinking, I don't really have time for that. I have so much homework. You've got my red team project to work on. Of course, you want to do college things uh, in college. But I would really suggest um, take the time to present. At least try it out. Uh, I know a lot of people probably don't think they're great public speakers, but I've never seen a bad presentation at RIT set. I've never thought, like, boy, that really wasted my time. Right. We're all here to learn. We're all help, here to help each other. Um, and so that's why I think you should present nothing. It builds confidence, whatever. Um, a lot of things do. But I think it's just fun to share what you do. Uh, and it's really helped me kind of establish who I was in college and at RIT SEC. The first, you'll probably say, I, I don't have anything to present about. Uh, but I know you do. You do class projects. You've built tools. Uh, there's a lot of things that you do in college that you learn about that you could share. First of all, all of these people have shared things that you could go and ask more about. Um, looking at uh, previous, like the education section of RIT SEC, if you find something interesting, you really like Windows offense, Go explore that some more. Use the, the slides, the references in the education section. So looking more into that, and really find something you want to present about. Also, going along that other RIT SEC presentations, if you really like building rootkits, go ask Jack. Look into that, look into his presentations about rootkits. There's some pretty cool stuff there, some recent resources you can look more into. And like I mentioned, your RIT classes too. I know you build tools for CSS, pen testing, forensics. And sure, maybe some people have done the same project, but no one's taken exactly the same classes. Maybe you have to build a unique tool uh, and you've done it a different way. And that thing may not be the most groundbreaking, but it's still cool to share and gives you that presentation experience. There's also a cool site I've kind of been 
following over the years um, the justice.gov press releases. They released some cool stuff um, like what Enzo just mentioned with the FBI turning uh, someone. They go into pretty good detail. And if that's not enough for you, a lot of the major news sites, especially cybersecurity news sites, write a lot about these, especially if it's a large campaign that they release. Uh, so this is definitely something to follow, see if something catches your eye. You can filter by cybersecurity topics and they're also on Twitter. I think it's just, just the, the justice, D-E-P-T, if you wanna follow them there. Also GitHub is a great place to follow people, just see what people are working on, what people are starring. Uh, I find a lot of cool repos this way, different stuff that I use uh, in my home lab or just in general um, looking at. So if something catches your eye there, um, definitely look into it, maybe present about it or ask that person what they're, why they started that, where they found it. And finally, of course, ideas.rit.sec.club. Uh, I took a little bit of a look at it and there are some really good resources, some good presentation ideas that I'd really like to see. Um, and I'd really like to see more basic presentations, like the topic I've heard thrown around uh, since freshman year was presenting on how Wi-Fi works. And I still haven't found out. I'm waiting on someone to uh, present about it. Teach me how Wi-Fi works. I will be eternally grateful. I also love the idea of co-presenting. Um, find an upperclassman. I'm sure they'd be willing to help you make a presentation and present along with you. Um, and that really helps uh, get your questions answered so you're not doing it all on your own, trying to look through documentation and blog posts. They probably know a good bit. And that brings me to researching your topic. Uh, once you've found something, uh, you may not be doing too much of this if you've built something, done a project. Um, but uh, for example, I presented about uh, fraudulent credit card uh, Russian hacker and how he was extradited and sentenced. And that was a whole lot of research. And I think it was pretty interesting. I'd like to do more of those, um, more less technical, um, more just like general cyber crime. That was a lot of research and I learned about a lot about researching and organizing data there. First of all, this picture again, uh, look at your peers, uh, ask questions. I think as you kind of hang in the labs, go to RIT sec, you kind of figure out what people's specialties are and everyone's always open to answering questions, telling you what they're working on. I'm sure someone knows the answer um, or can help you point you to some other resource that will have your answer for you. There's also a ton of conference talks online. This is a screenshot just from the latest DEF CON. Uh, all of the villages uh, record their talks and upload them to DEF CON uh, YouTube channel. And unless you're doing some groundbreaking stuff, someone's probably presenting on something similar before between DEF CON, Black Hat, all the B-sides. So these are really good to kind of get an idea of how other people have presented things in the past and what other people are working on. I use Notion to organize all of my notes pretty much. Um, it's basically a note taking app that it takes markdown. You can make different sub pages, lots of different tables and things. And it was really nice for organizing this presentation because I had a ton of legal documents, um, web pages, just different times and dates, little notes. So that really helped. Um, I would definitely look into it. I think you get the pro version for free as a student. Um, I know a couple people in the club use it and I really like it for organizing my notes. I also just found, about, found out about Digo about a year ago. 
And it's been awesome for um, annotating different news articles or PDFs that you come across. It's a browser extension and you can basically save a web page and tag it as something. So in this case, it's BEC for business email compromise. And you can highlight a part of the web page and it'll save that as a quote. So you aren't like going back to a, your notes a month later and being like, why did I save this link and have to read the whole thing again? Maybe find what you were looking for, maybe you don't. And so this will really speed up um, your note taking, annotating, and just organization. So you've collected all your information, you know your topic, you're ready to actually make some slides now, get some work done. Of course, the first top, the first stop is a theme. Um, the Google slide themes are all right. Um, they get kind of repetitive, but if you're just starting out, they're fine. Don't overthink your first presentation. Everything from here on out is all just recommendations. Just do what you want to do for your first presentation. It's not a big deal. Um, but I like to pick themes from Slides Go and Slides Carnival, like this one. Um, there's some really nice themes offered for free. You just click copy and it makes a copy in your Google Drive. And then you can edit it from there. But don't make it too flashy so that it doesn't distract from your content. Um, but make it cool, make it dark, of course. Next will probably be your who am I slide. Probably wanna include your name, year and your major. And if you have security interests, if it's, if you're just getting started in your freshman year and you haven't really found anything you're super interested in. Um, I know I was just kind of all over interested, interested in everything my first year. That's fine too. Add some hobbies or a fun fact. Um, for example, I was taller than my second grade teacher in second grade. That's a fun fact. Gets people that kind of know you on a personal level, they'll want to pay attention and they'll know you after the presentation too. It's not a requirement to Photoshop yourself pointing at your content. Um, maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, um, but feel free to actually Photoshop yourself into the cyber background to be elite hacks or. So finally, we're getting to who I am. Uh, I'm Nathaniel Beckstead, um, alumni, as they said, I just graduated last December, so like eight months ago. And I currently work as a security analyst full-time at IBM. I also love automation. I always have Ansible, just writing little scripts to automate my day-to-day -day life. And I love cooking too. So hit me up if you love any of that. And I also blog at scriptingis.life. You've probably heard it a million times, um, but don't put too many words on your slides. It's hard uh, to pay attention to what someone's actually speaking about when you're reading the slides. And also you'll wanna read off your slides if you have complete sentences there. So just doing a few words or just one picture uh, normally does the trick. It makes people focus on you and you focus on what you're actually saying and talking to the audience rather than turning around and looking at your slides. For example, here's a presentation I did uh, one or two years ago. I basically put a bunch of AWS infrastructure together uh, to build a website screenshotting web app. And so I wanted to showcase how cheap it was to build a project on AWS. All of this was covered by the free tier. And even if it wasn't, it was gonna be super cheap if a lot of people used it. And I wanted to demonstrate that. So I put um, for S3, which is a file storage service, all the different pricing for uh, every different service. And so we got like eight numbers here. Um, and yeah, it kind of makes the point of cost you four ten thousandths of a cent for a thousand get requests. But these numbers really don't mean anything once you move to the next slide. No one's gonna remember them and no one really cares unless they're actually really into building a project. 
and AWS pricing, which no one really is. So here's how I would do it now, thinking about uh, how I want to actually remove all these words and still make the point across. So for $1, $1 bill, you could make 2.5 million get requests to S3. And that's not including the free tier. So you could have even more. Um, that's one big number on the slide. There's nothing to focus on that we try to make sense of. You kind of get the point right away. This is also something that may stick with you afterwards. Um, just the big font and dollar bill, the picture will make you think S3 is pretty cheap. So you finish your slides, you signed up. It's the big day. You're probably scared to death like I was. Uh, I still am. To be totally transparent, I think I had a nightmare last night about presenting today because this is the first time I've presented uh, online. So I still get nervous before every presentation. Um, I still think like, what if no one likes this? What if this isn't super interesting to anyone? But it always helps to just go through with it, sign up for a week from now, two weeks from now, and just get your name in there. Because we're all awkward nerds. We're not gonna sign up for something and then be like, oh, sorry, can't do it. Um, at least I don't like backing out of stuff. So just putting your name there, committing to something um, really helps and helps you go through it, through with it. So it's the big day, you're up there, you just got introduced and you're ready to start. Uh, I don't know anyone that speaks too slow or slower when they're presenting. Uh, everyone speaks fast. So you're probably not gonna be conscious of it, um, but if you do catch yourself stumbling over your words, speaking too fast, just take a deep breath. I know everyone says that, but like actually just stop, take a pause and slow down your words uh, for a little bit. I always bring my water bottle with me and uh, just take a sip every once in a while, take a pause. Um, when you're moving to the next slide, just take a little break, give the audience something to think about. I guess this doesn't really work anymore. It's a little outdated, um, but look up and make eye contact. Don't be just reading off your slides. Actually look at people um, and that really creates a connection with the audience. Um, and don't worry if you mess up, no one's going to know. You've probably practiced, rehearsed your slides over and over again, but everyone else is hearing this for the first time and they don't know what you were planning on saying. Um, just like you probably didn't hear everything that I messed up in this presentation already. Last thing is an app called Speako that I just found a couple couple months ago and it helps. It's a little strange at first. You have to record yourself speaking and it's weird to just uh, hear yourself speak about a random topic in, alone in your bedroom. Uh, but it helps with your pace. It'll show you your words per minute and kind of a range of where you want to be and helps you pause for effect. Um, helps with speaking confidently and clearly and a bunch of different stuff. It's not all free, but there's a good amount of exercises that are free and some good tips I've learned um, when you're preparing to speak. You may be doing a demo. They're pretty common for technical presentations, um, but they're known to break. So take backups, screenshots, or just the whole video of you get doing the demo, put it in a slide after you say you're gonna do the demo. And if it does work, then fine, you can skip the slide. And then if it doesn't work, you still have a backup. You can still present what you were gonna talk, talk about. Um, and don't be discouraged if things break. That's just the nature of live demos. So finally, 
you've reached the end of your presentation and say, thank you, are there any questions? I feel like more times than not, I don't get any questions. And it's not, it's not a you thing. It's just, you probably have Twitch or Discord pulled up on another monitor. You're probably working on something else right now. You're kind of half paying attention. You don't really have any questions. Um, that's just kind of the nature of doing club presentations. So don't be afraid if you don't get any questions. If you do, that's awesome. Uh, I always like to follow up with, does that answer your question? Because this is a time to kind of clarify things with the audience, right? So um, sometimes you might just misunderstand their question and answer something totally different. So saying, does that answer your question? Let's them clarify again. And again, outdated, I guess. Um, I always forget to repeat the question for the stream. I guess now it's read the question for the stream. Um, but yeah, questions are cool. So you've completed your presentation, pack up your laptop, sit back down. You're probably feeling like this now. Hopefully you are. You're probably really tired, uh, but I hope it was worth it. I watched the video Nick posted in the workplace, how to speak. I have it linked in one of these slides. And it talks, I think the biggest thing I took away from that is that people feel inspired the most when the speaker is just passionate about what they talk about. So don't be afraid about anything I've talked about here. If you have too many words, if you forget to say something, it's fine. Um, as long as you're passionate and talking about something you like, which I'm sure you have interests if you're coming to RIT sec, I'm sure you'll all do cool things. Um, as long as you get up and speak, I think you'll inspire people. We're doing questions now? How's this thing work? Yeah, I can, yeah. Uh, just check out Twitch. Um, if you don't have it pulled up, I can read any questions. I have one. Um, okay. At Nathaniel, okay, this is from Twitch. At Nathaniel, how many presentations have you done at RIT6 slash Sparsa? Oh, man. I don't know, John, you ever make that playlist? Uh, honestly, no, but I, I really, I think I'm going yeah. to at this point just because you've had so many. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's always a couple times a semester. Um, I also have a link on my blog. It's at least 15, I think, um, over four years. Wow. Uh, okay. Lost count after the first one. Here's another question for you. Um, at Nathaniel, do you have any special tips for presenting online? This is the first time I've presented online. So, no. Um, it does help that you can um, like have multiple monitors. We're all nerds. I'm sure you have multiple monitors and an RGB keyboard. Um, you can pull up your notes and just read from that, um, kind of like speaker notes. Uh, that's one advantage, I guess, of just being behind your computer. Um, I don't know. I feel it's harder to present when you don't have people to look at, um, just kind of staring at my wall, and it's not that fun. Um, maybe you'll feel better with not having people staring at you. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I'll have to reflect on this afterwards, see how I feel about it. Awesome, awesome. All right, I, if there's any more questions, I'm sure you can reach out to Nathaniel directly uh, over Workplace, but I do not see any more in the chat. So yeah, awesome, thank you, Nathaniel.